Hey there, folks. Uh, so, just a quickie mine. Um, got a new uh, Funny Playing Game Boy Color kit version here. And uh, we're going to do a quick little install of this bad boy. Uh, so, this is what you get when you order one of these kits. Mm, just about everything minus the screen at the very least. Uh, so, for Game Boy Color here, you get the ribbon. We've got uh, some stickers here to help protect the LCD, uh, as well as um, try and mitigate a little bit of light bleed. And then we've got just a few short wires. Um, soldering is optional on these kits. They, uh, they should have a touch sensor for all the controls, as well as... Um, they get all the power they need from the uh, LCD connector. Now, I don't have a screen here to show off with this kit. However, uh, because we're going to be doing an upgrade on this bad boy here. Uh, but I do just have another one here from another kit that we will use for um, demonstrative purposes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do an upgrade install to this machine right here. I very, very, very rarely ever recommend taking a Game Boy Color, or any Game Boy for that matter, um, that's already been modified and taking the kit out of it to upgrade to a newer kit. There is almost never a single circumstance where a new feature or what have you makes sense, like from a cost perspective, to just go buy another kit and install in the same Game Boy you have. Um, yeah, I know. I've been there. I totally get uh, you know, you have your, 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 your favorite Game Boy or whatever set up, something that you may have modded a year or two ago, and, you know, maybe you've got a slightly older kit in there that doesn't have as many features as you might want, and you're feeling kind of locked in, um, you know, maybe you really care about FRM, blah, 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 OSDs, and, you know, your, your, your specific kit doesn't have that feature. Trust me. You're really not missing much, but I feel you, and it does suck. Um, I'm in a little bit of a unique position where it makes sense for me to have uh, Game Boys on hand for comparison and testing, and so on that note, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade my console. Um, I am going to try and call out where appropriate anything that might be a little bit different for something that's pre-modified like this thing versus um, like if you were going into this fresh. I don't really like calling my videos tutorials, but I know that some people use them that way. Uh, so I think it makes sense to, to try and provide as best tutorial as feasible. And so I like covering every step of the way, start to end. but. We'll go ahead and start by tearing this bad boy down. Uh, so this Game Boy Color has three mods that I recall. Uh, the first, of course, and the second, I guess, are related. Uh, it does have a Q5 backlight kit already installed. It is a slightly older version from Funny Playing still. Uh, still uses the laminated screen. In fact, it uses the exact same LCD as the new kit, which is why I'm not even going to bother swapping it out. Uh, the second modification is, of course, the funny playing housing to support said screen. And then the third modification is the um, LED button modification uh, so that my buttons glow. Of course, it's a clear shell, so you see more of the bleed than the actual glow, but it's okay. The button modification, the button kit, is 100% unnecessary. You don't need it. Um, it's just something I have. We will be taking advantage of that, of course, but it's unnecessary. Uh, oh, there is a fourth modification that I just spotted. This Game Boy Color in particular has a Game Boy Advance speaker in it for no other reason than when I assembled this Game Boy Color, I needed a speaker and I had a Game Boy Advance one handy, but not a Game Boy Color speaker. They're the same from a technical perspective. All right, so 
for tear down here, I'm going to go ahead and desolder my original kit. This would be completely unnecessary in an unmodified Game Boy because an unmodified Game Boy would not have a backlight kit soldered into it. That out. And of course this one also has the buttons wired up. Go ahead and pull that out too. Just like that, I'm going to go ahead and release that. Oh, wow. There's a little bit of schmoo in that connector. Uh, and peel that off. There's a little bit of double-sided tape holding the uh, ribbon onto the screen. Um, if you buy one of these kits new, chances are... Well, it's going to come with the screen, uh, but chances are pretty good it's also going to be adhered to the screen. Just be cognizant of that while you're manipulating this thing. All right, so now that we've got this torn down, I am going to go ahead and plug it into my power supply. Get some baseline power usage measurements. Do keep in mind that this console is going to be a little bit higher than normal due to the LED button mod. Um, but since we're taking a before and after measurement, it should be perfectly fine to ignore because all we care about is the power usage for the screen. So I'm going to roll this back to an OEM screen. Ooh, that is set to 14 volts. Let's set this to 2.4 volts. Plug that in, plug that in. And where did the game go that I just had? under my power supply, because why wouldn't I put it there? Switch the power supply on, huh? All right, Game Boy comes on like normal. No surprise here. Uh, I need a membrane. All right, so in the overworld of Pokemon Silver, the exact same cart I almost always test, except for right now, because I grabbed the wrong Pokemon Silver cart. But in my defense, they're both Pokemon Silver. Um, <laughs> we're just going to work with this. In the overworld, basically the same game as I always do. Um, should be negligible. At 2.4 volts, this console is pulling anywhere from 103 to 109 milliamps, which is pretty much uh, pretty much expected. A um, little on the high side, but again, it's got the LEDs, so that would explain. Okay, I'm happy with that baseline. Let's pull this apart, and now let's test the uh, new kit here. So again, these should be connected when you get them, but if not, the easiest way to do it is to get these lined up and then press them together with your finger on the back of the board. You wanna squeeze it between your fingers. If you do this and you press it down against the screen, um, chances are very good you'll damage the screen. These LCDs are extremely fragile. It's kind of unfortunate, but it is what it is. I'll go ahead and plug this in, make sure we can get it tested before we make any modifications, just in case there is an issue. Flip that over and I'm just holding things together to make sure that nothing shorts out because there's this, this big old copper surface along these LCDs right against that cart reader interface. We don't want those to touch. But the console comes right up. Everything seems to be working. Uh, in this particular case, it doesn't matter because I'm not using this LCD, but I have visually inspected this LCD and I don't see any concerns, um, like no no damaged areas or, or nothing like that. Um, oops. Spoilers. Uh, <laughs> 
but yeah, like I said, we're using this LCD, so it really doesn't matter too much. Um, but now is definitely the time to inspect that, especially down by the logo area. I have seen some people run into issues where um, there were damaged pixels in the logo area, but they didn't see that until they actually started playing the console and were paying a little bit more close attention. But it is what it is. Visual inspection looks good. Everything seems to be in order. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight levels of brightness. At the minimum level of brightness and 2.4 volts, same cart, same everything else, same brightness level for the buttons. This console is pulling 236 to 247 milliamps. Uh, so just over two times what it was pulling. Uh, so for practicality's purpose, for practicality's sake, if that means you got 20 hours out of a pair of batteries beforehand, you're gonna get eight or less going forward. Um, let's see what high brightness is. What did I say? There were eight levels. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At maximum brightness, this thing pulls 303 to 313 milliamps. Um, and given how much more brightness you get out of the screen, I think that's probably worth it at that power budget. And any more, and it just resets back to the minimum. Uh, now, unfortunately, that is as bright as these kits get, unless you modify it. Um, I will be doing that. We will test it later. First, I'm going to proceed with a little bit more of the install, because now that we know it works, we can uh, start doing the soldering and getting this thing taken care of. Move that over. So first I am going to start with the screen. Hello, Mr. Kitty Cat. The bare LCD is gonna look something like this with this nice shiny mirrored background and the copper down here. Funny Playing has seen to it to include um, some stickers, both for insulation and aesthetic purposes. I'm gonna go ahead and get this bad boy cleaned up here. I got a microfiber somewhere. There it is. So this is, of course, one of my test units, so my fingerprints are all over it. Not that it makes too big of a difference. This step is not necessary. Recommended, but not necessary. Uh, these LCDs are particularly fragile because there is nothing to protect the back of the unit. So Funny Playing gives you these stickers here, and you can take the big one, peel that off, and then this is gonna go on the LCD itself. And if you get it misaligned, unfortunately, you're kind of committed. I should have put more effort into this, but I knew I wasn't using the screen, so I didn't. Um, but once you've got that on there, that's kind of where it lives. If you got any bubbles in it like I did, it really doesn't make that big of a difference. You can try working it towards the edge, but unfortunately, I stuck down this whole thing first, and now I've just kind of kind of got to live with that. Of course, it doesn't matter. It's on the back. You'll never see it once it's installed, but it doesn't matter. I know it's there and that's enough. Uh, that is the back one. This one is the one that I recommend installing if you're going to install any of them. Um, it's good for insulation. It'll help protect the screen in case you're ever working on the inside of the Game Boy. You see how much of this thing is exposed. Uh, if you scratch this, it will show through. So this is the reflective layer for the backlight itself. If you damage this, your backlight on the LCD will also be damaged. Um, as you can see, the one that I've been using is not insulated, and I have not had any issues. And I am in and out of my Game Boys more than most people. Still, 
It is a just-in-case thing because once that layer gets damaged, there is no undamaging it. You're replacing the screen. Um, next, we have this front area, and I'm going to apply this one too because mine is peeling up just a little bit. Uh, this one is solely for aesthetic. So if you choose to install it, here is what your aesthetic looks like. You've just got this black section across with a funny playing logo. If you opt, opt not to install it, this is what you see in your clear console. Personally, I think this is a little bit more visually interesting, um, but to each their own. It's just a sticker. Peel that off. And this just gets stuck down along the edge here. And now, when you've got that inserted, nice and clean, you got your little funny playing logo. It is what it is. Um, these lenses come in several different styles. Of course, I've got the white one here that I'm playing with. I don't really like the white one. It seems like the printing is not really thick enough and you get some light bleed on the illuminated logo area. But if you're into white, it certainly works. Um, I think the black ones look a little bit better. Of course, you can't see the logo in there because this one's not illuminated, but we'll go over that more later. Uh, and then there are, of course, the Nintendo Entertainment Systems or whatever it is. Not NES. Nintendo Advanced Video System, that's what it is. AVS, not NES. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more later as well. So let me get this installed. This is the new one, right? Yeah. Certainly looks like it. Again. Snapping these two together between my fingers so I don't damage the screen. And I am going to wire up these start and select buttons. Again, not necessary. I am choosing to do it because I'm in here. Why not? But, um, I don't know. I like to show off all the features. I'm going to get these tinned up. I have my insulator thrown underneath this so that I don't accidentally melt the shell or damage the LCD underneath. Let me move that a little. It is just a solid chunk of aluminum. And again, the entire purpose is for insulation. The alternative is, of course, just not soldering in the shell. That would work, too. I see so many content creators install, like, doing this soldering while everything's already assembled, and it's just, oh, it's always so, so terrifying. I'm surprised they don't ruin more things. Okay. So now here is a deviation point because mine is already modified. I can use these start and select pads on my, uh, on my um, button LED mod. Now, normally, by default, there's my multimeter, there it is, continuity mode. The select via is right down here, right on top of the button. You can see that has been passed through to the top of the ribbon right here. We can also use one of these vias, maybe? No. I don't know which one it is, um, but it's also definitely over here, right here, and up here, one of these, probably. Hmm. There it is. Just a little bit of flux on the board. Start, same deal, down here on the bottom right, it also goes to the left of my button mod. Though do keep in mind this specific iteration of this LED button mod, the labels of start and select are swapped on this, on, 
on this pass through here. It doesn't matter for the funny playing kit, but if you're wiring up something else, it might. Uh, but if I wasn't using this pass through, I could use one of these vias up here. No, this bad boy right here, or I can come up here and use this one. I highly recommend using the vias over the test pads because they're in a nice convenient spot for hiding the wires. But if you're gonna use the vias, don't use this top group. Use this group down here closer to the cart reader or this group over to the left if it's one of the D-pad buttons. I think it's just up, down, left, and right that are right here. Maybe. One of these is ground, let's find out. Oops, yeah, there we go. So then that must be right there, there we go. Yeah, doesn't matter. There are plenty of handy guides to look up if you want to see uh, where the buttons go. I will try and throw a link in the description, but they're also probably just on the listing for one of these things. Um, wire this up. Well, someone's getting in trouble. I hear a lot of plastic rustling. And I know my cat doesn't have permission to open whatever he's trying to open. I'll deal with that later. All right. Now that the buttons are installed, I can just kind of twist these wires around to pick up the slack. Flip that over. And then we hide all of the uh, spare wire behind the screen. So that when it's flipped over, you can't see any of the additional wires. Happy shiny. I will go ahead and reinstall my screws. This specific shell is a slightly older iteration um, of the funny playing laminated Game Boy Color variety. In this specific iteration, it only came with two motherboard screws instead of three, I believe. Um, either way, I'm down to only two. You just need the outside two. Don't do the middle one. Just skip the middle one. Even if you have the screw, just, just trust me. It's gonna, it's gonna make your life quite a bit easier. All right, I'm gonna flip this up and over and insert. And we can just leave that like that. But of course I am going to come in here and solder the power wire now. Is that long enough? Oh, it just barely is. Again, I 100% do not recommend soldering inside of the shell unless you are extremely confident in what you are doing because it is extraordinarily easy to accidentally uh, just touch this whole surface, the metal bits of this iron. Um, it's at like 250 degrees Celsius and the melting point for most of the materials in this Game Boy is under uh, 80 degrees Celsius, so it's a good way to destroy your Game Boy. Oops, that is to say the plastics melt at 80. All right, but we're gonna go ahead and solder this up to the common pad on the power switch. That feels soldered. And if all went well, we should be done with the soldering. Now I can come back, reinsert that game, and 
bring the power supply back over. And now I should have more brightness available to me. So same 2.4 volts. All right, at the minimum brightness, it's pulling pretty much the same. Uh, 2.4 volts, we're pulling 224 milliamps to 234 milliamps. And then there should be eight levels of brightness, so we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but in person I can certainly see that it's brighter. I haven't adjusted any of my filming lights at all, and you can see the screen a little bit easier, so. Um, 2.4 volts, the console is pulling 363 to 372 milliamps. I have no recollection of what it was before, so I don't know if that's higher or lower. I think it's higher, but I'll have to check the numbers to be sure. Um, all of the numbers that I measure with this power supply, I end up putting in a spreadsheet that I do have linked in the description. Uh, it should be nice and easy to get a before and after, um, you know, make, make a comparison, extrapolate from the data that I've gathered to, to try and figure out what sort of battery life projections you might get. Uh, but I will say, with the power wire soldered at maximum brightness, this thing's pulling just under 400 milliamps. Um, that's gonna put it at like a quarter of the original battery life. Unfortunately, that kind of sucks, but at the same time, you know, let's say conservative estimate, you only get 20 hours out of a pair of double A's, which I think Game Boy Colors actually usually get about 30, but whatever. For the purpose of math, let's say you get 20 hours. That means you'll probably get less than five hours out of the same pair of batteries. Is that a problem? I mean, it's not great, but I certainly personally don't think it's a problem. I don't play my Game Boys for more than five hours in the single sitting. So, if I have a problem with that, well, that's where the second set of batteries comes in. You see, this pair lives on the charger. This pair lives in the Game Boy. When I'm done playing, or after about four hours, give or take, this pair comes out of the Game Boy. This pair goes into the Game Boy. I keep playing the Game Boy. And then this pair goes on the charger. Rinse and repeat every time I want to swap them out. Um, it's not the 1990s anymore. We're not using nickel cadmium batteries. There is no memory on these sort of things. You just charge them when you're done and it's fine. That applies to nickel metal hydride. That applies to lithium ion batteries. It just works either way. This particular Game Boy doesn't have a battery mod. I don't think that there's anything necessarily wrong with that. If you want to battery mod your Game Boy, by all means, just, you know, keep in mind, you charge it when you're uh, done playing, and that's it. Easy peasy. All right. So let me go ahead and finish up this install, because I do have some more stuff I want to talk about, but I will ramble forever if I do. So let's... Make some progress, huh? All right. Where's my butt? There it is. Power switch. All right. So here is the touch sensor. It looks like this is intended to go against the top half of the shell, just like that. Uh, so you'll peel the adhesive up and then just stick it down onto the shell. Um, this is a slightly newer variant ribbon, so the, 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 the controller I see for the touch sensor is on the back of the sensor itself. I'm guessing Funny Playing was figuring that by moving the IC to where the sensor is, they can uh, more closely control the sensitivity. Um, whether that is increased or decreased, I don't know. I personally haven't had any problems with it. I like folding it around so that, oops, 
kind of like this so that when you got the shell together you just slap it down and then you have the touch sensor inside the cart slot um, that means that that makes it a lot harder to accidentally hit because when there's a game in there you can't hit it but that doesn't work with this version that has the IC on the back, unfortunately. The older versions were a little bit more friendly in that regard, unfortunately. But slightly new hardware layout means slightly new install. So let's peel this up. And then we can just slam that down in there. Just like that. And I think it should be good to go as is. So let's button this bad boy up. Call it a day, huh? Get home in time for supper. He says knowing full well he's doing another video after this. Ooh, that one may have cross-threaded. Oops. I forgot to mention this for the motherboard screws, but I did do it for them as well. Um, you know, let me pull one of these out and just start over. So, because this is an aftermarket shell, these don't normally come with threaded screw holes. Um, you're threading them with the self-threading screws the first time around. I've already used this shell, so it's already threaded. So to reinstall my screws, I'm going to spin the screw backwards, counterclockwise, until it clicks. Um, you'll also feel it drop slightly down into the hole, and then once that happens, you spin it the other way, the normal way, and it gets installed without cutting new threads, because these are self-tappers, that's important. Plastic screw posts, you can only cut the threads once, Maybe twice, depending on the quality of the screw post. Usually you only get one out of them, though. Uh, and then once we've got it all the way install installed, bottomed out, I'm going to back it up a quarter turn. That will ensure that there is not too much pressure on these screw posts. Um, and while we're at it, because I skipped that middle screw post, uh... Actually, looking at it, my shell is one of the modified ones, so it would have been fine to install. I don't have any pressure marks on the front. Uh, so, Funny Playing modified this housing by default. Normally, from Nintendo and from other vendors, there's a ridge inside the battery compartment that holds the batteries in place. You notice, this thing ain't going nowhere. But if I install battery in here, there's no ridge, like, that can, that can go crossways. Because Funny Playing flattened this out for the purpose of um, battery mods here, um, there's less room for that screw right in the middle. There is a divot in the shell, works totally fine, as long as you install the screw fully. If you do not install the screw fully, the back shell will push up against the front shell and you will get a crack going right along that screw post. Uh, if you install the screw too much, the exact opposite will happen and then the post will kind of divot in from the center 
and then you'll get a crack right down the middle. It looks the exact same. Um, so the easiest thing to do is just skip that screw entirely. Or if you really want, um, just drill a hole through the back of the shell and then you can install that screw after everything's assembled and you know you have clearance. But anyway, I totally forgot the point I was making. Screws, they're complicated. You don't wanna over tighten them. You don't wanna tighten not enough. All right. Ta-da, everything works. So we should have the touch sensor right there. And then what do our start and select do? Holding select probably does nothing. Holding start probably does nothing. Holding start and select brings up the OSD, I believe. And then start toggles through the options. So the first option is of course our eight levels of brightness. Next option, oh, select goes down, start goes up. How do we progress? Hold start select, nope. I don't know how to navigate this kit. Oh, interesting. I don't know that wiring up the uh, start and select does too much. Or maybe I'm doing it wrong. Nope. So it looks like start and select, as of this iteration, uh, you can use them to toggle the options up or down individually, or you hold both buttons to open or close the menu. That's it. The touch sensor should give us the same slew of options. We press and hold to get into the OSD. Short press to toggle the options. Medium press to move on to the next option. And short press again to toggle them. And then long press to close the menu. So that being said, let's talk about our options. So first, of course, we have the eight levels of brightness. Next option is DSP, which gives us the pixel grid modes. So one gives us both vertical and horizontal lines for pixel grid emulation. Two gives us zero lines. We have that perfect 4x integer scale. Three gives us vertical lines only. Four gives us vertical lines, but instead of black, they're inverted or something. I, I don't know. It looks, it looks pretty good. It's, if I were to use an option, it's the option I would use. Uh, and then last but not least is five, which is vertical lines only, but they're a lot thicker and darker. So I'm going to leave that on four. Next option is FRM. Um, turning this on and off, you will see no difference outside most games. I do have a very specific game that it makes a quite significant difference in that we'll address in just a moment. LGC, or logo color, lets us cycle through the colors of the logo itself. So you see the logo is illuminated. I got mine, it says Game Boy Color. There are, what, 27 presets? Or we can go in here and just adjust the values to whatever we want. We have 32 options. There you go. So from 0 to 31 for each of the R, G, and B values. You can set your own color, like if you want to match your, your buttons here. And then the last option is N. I don't know what N means, but that should be... Oh. <laughs> N is next page. <laughs> so we've got two options here. Um, XST and YST, you see as I'm toggling through this, the display area is moving up or down depending on which option I'm on. I'm gonna leave this on the default here because I think it was perfectly fine where it was. 
I think it was perfectly centered. So I'm going to move that back. But in case you need to move the display area on the LCD itself, not too bad. And then P probably brings us to the last one. Yep. And that's it. I kind of expected there to be one more option. Because there ought to be an option for the other logo type. So I mentioned this earlier, but there are two different iterations of this kit. There's the ones that have the Game Boy Color illuminated logo, but there's also the ones that have the Nintendo Advanced Video System illuminated logo. Uh, 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 uh. Well, the color block for illuminating this logo is shaped differently than the color block for illuminating this logo. So there used to be an option to swap between the two. Um, oh, that's the old style. If we press and hold, there we go. You can see now my logo looks cut off because I've swapped to the other logo mode. I'm gonna press and hold that again to swap back to the logo mode that I should have, and there we go. Now everything's nice and illuminated, and that was just pressing and holding the start and select button for, I don't know if it was eight seconds or something. Uh, this is the 2.8 kit, I think, but without the OSD. So it should also, yep, press and hold the touch sensor also does that. But of course on the newer kits, that just opens up the OSD. So. Let's see. I don't know if they've just removed that mode entirely or if there's a different trigger. It looks like they may have removed that mode entirely. So I wonder if they've just expanded this color block to fill both logos and now you just, you don't have to choose. It just works with both. That's probably the smartest way to do that. But there you go. Looks good. Uh, let's run some artificial test real quick. I don't expect to see anything new. Uh, the actual video handling portion of this kit has, has been around for a while and is pretty well established. Let's see if it's my last round. Probably is. Yeah. <laughs> of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? So we'll go ahead and look at the shadow sprite here. The first one, um, most important, I think, Notice there is zero flickering. Uh, if I go in here into the OSD and turn FRM off, now look at that. Now look at that. It's flickering very noticeably. So what's going on? Let me explain this. Original Game Boy consoles, you know, big black and white, four AA batteries, huge, huge, absolutely huge console. Those things did not support transparency in any way whatsoever. So devs, being the uh, clever sons of guns that they are, they decided to work around that in the most creative way they knew how. They just flickered the sprite on and off as quickly as they could, and the terrible pixel response times of the original screens, well, that just resulted in a nice transparency effect. So, I do this every single time. It's the wrong easy flash. That's not an easy flash. That's an easy flash. I swear, I'm going to fix it after this video. I'm just going to put my ROMs on both of these. There's only two that I play. Like, it's not that hard to move them over. I just keep forgetting. Oh, and that was the wrong save. Not that it matters that much, but I'm particular. All right. Here's why I like this example. This is a pretty familiar game. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. A uh, little it from a little indie company here. Um, this guy's chain right here, this chain chomp, I've been going around for years saying that um, 
Nintendo was doing this for transparency reasons, but as it turns out, I think I may have been wrong on that. Um, and Nintendo was doing this for sprite limitation reasons. Um, so the transparency is just a nice side effect. The only reason these are flickering on and off is because each one of these is its own character and you can only have something like 32 sprites. And I think these bigger ones count as four sprites. So you've got four, eight, 12, 13, 14 already just between these stuff and we haven't even started at the chain. Um, so that might have been flickering on and off for sprite, for resource limitations, not for transparency. Transparency, however, is a nice side effect. You see it's nice and flickery. We'll go in here and we'll turn FRM back on. Close that out and flicker be gone. It's just now nice and transparent. Works good, right? Right? That's the intended effect, huh? One more example. This is the most extreme, most egregious example that I know of. And it wouldn't be a uh, Mako video if I didn't sit here and play his ass for a few minutes anyway. So this game, the entire background is transparent. And trust me when I say it is genuinely incredible. Like, oh, you're you're probably looking at this thinking, oh, it's it's an original Game Boy game, four colors, you know, it's nothing spectacular. And you know what? You're right. The graphics suck. But for the time, considering what the system is capable of, it's really well done. Now, I'm sitting here playing it. I've got absolutely zero issues. But let's go ahead and turn FRM off, and I'll show you what this thing looks like on most other backlight kits. And let's turn the brightness up, because every time I open the menu, we lose a step. Now, notice how flickery this is being. I'm, I'm going to shake it a little, because I think my phone's doing, some, doing me some favors here. But if I shake it, I can see it in the preview being nice and flickery. But... Because the entire background is transparent, the entire background is flickering. Um, these newer kits have oh, touch sensors, man, I swear. Uh, I keep miscounting. Because these newer kits have such newer screens that are capable of much faster refresh, re oh, pixel response rates, um, you just see that flickering. So this is what the FRM mode does. It enables a frame buffer uh, that allows blending of the frames together. Um, it reduces flicker. In theory, it also increases the amount of latency um, because you can't display a frame until you have the next frame. Whereas uh, on the normal display modes, you know, it displays the frame as soon as it gets the frame, but you can't average the data together unless you have both frames. Anyway, um, in theory, it's only one additional frame of lag. Um, in practice, I haven't noticed any lag in, in, in either modes. I'm sure it exists, but I'm not particularly sensitive to it. I haven't noticed any issues. I've been able to play games like this just fine. Um, now, this looks terrible. I'm having a hard time playing it. It's very distracting with all the flickering. I would like to turn FRM back on. I'm gonna do that. Notice the flicker goes away almost instantly. Turn that back up, turn that down. There we go. I like these settings. See, doesn't that look nice? Anyway, you get the idea. All in all, pretty good. Um, I didn't expect there to be any real big differences between this newer version of the kit and the other versions of the kit that I've done at least three other videos on at this point. Um, 
I just thought it might be prudent to do a new video because last time I did a video, like a week went by and then Funny Playing added the OSD. I didn't think it was necessary to do a new video because it did all of the same things, like all of the features were there um, between my two kits. Uh, the only difference is, well, now they've also added FRM. Um, this is, don't, don't, don't mince my words here. Don't misunderstand me. This is not a new kit. This has been on the market for six months now, at the very least, probably more. Um, I just haven't done a video on it because I thought I didn't really have anything too necessary to add. Um, but I guess it is nice to have a, um, definitive reference, as it were. And now I know. Now we all know. Um, I hadn't personally used one of the OSD kits for Game Boy Color. I had used one of the Game Boy Advance OSD kits. Um, and I've used other funny playing kits. Um, so I kind of had an idea about the features, but now it's nice to know. Um, I think it's a little weird that they removed that extra display mode. I am very curious to see how it's going to work with one of these Nintendo Advanced Video System lenses, but I'm not curious enough to disassemble both of these Game Boys right now to find out. Um, I think I'll just ask Funny Playing instead, and uh, I don't know, when I do the premiere I'll throw it in chat or I'll do a uh, pin comment or throw it in the description, I don't know. I'll try and put that information out there. Um, but otherwise, I think that's about all I've got. This is still one of my favorite kits for Game Boy Color, pretty much since they've been making Game Boy Color kits. I like that if you buy one of Funny Playing's shells and their display kit, it's drop-in. Uh, like, you just drop the kit into the shell, plug it into the Game Boy, the, that's it. There's, <laughs> there's no soldering required. Um, in fact, in traditional funny playing fashion, I think they've um, needlessly obfuscated the controls to the point where it doesn't even make sense to have button controls in this thing. You just do everything from the touch sensor anyway, since you have to use the touch sensor to navigate the OSD. Um, that's kind of always been the case for Game Boy Color kits from funny playing where you need the touch sensor. I don't know why they don't just add an extra button on, um, so it's like select and left and right on the D-pad or something, I don't, I don't know. Whatever, it doesn't matter, any any three buttons. Pick your buttons. Because Game Boy Advance, yes, just, just Advance, not SP. You have Start L and R, or Select L and R. Uh, but then SP, you just have the Brightness button, that's all they use. But they use the same, whatever, it doesn't matter, I'm rambling. Um, pretty decent kit, I will throw links to all of this stuff down in the description if you wanna check it out. Uh, thanks to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending it my way to play with. Um, it's always nice to get a look at some of these kits, see what's going on, um, see what what kind of installs people are experiencing on their hardware, that sort of stuff. Um, if you want to grab one of these kits for yourself, I highly recommend getting the Funny Playing Shell that goes with it. Uh, because with how this kit installs, you have to... You have to cut out the lens all the way to the very bottom of the shell, and then the screen itself kind of sticks out and goes over the shell. So if you want to cut one of these shells for your own purposes, instead of using one of Funny Playing's shells, you have to mill out this entire area and make sure it's perfectly flat, because if you try separating these two, the, the glass from the screen, you know, these are laminated together, that, that, that will destroy the screen. So your, kite, your cuts have to be extraordinarily precise for it to work if you don't want to use one of Funny Playing Shells. But if you're fine using Funny Playing Shells, do recommend. Um, and then from there, I guess you can kit it out if you want the, the button LEDs or the battery mod, but I don't know. I, I think the screen in the shell is good enough, and then just use some nickel metal hydrides and you're, you're, you're good to go. Um, as you can see, power usage doesn't seem to be a problem. I'm booting off of the lowest voltage batteries that I own on a stock power regulator with LEDs, max brightness, and the power wire soldered. I don't think there's going to be any issues. 
Uh, some of the other kits on the market are a little bit power hungry. Um, spoiler alert. This one is too, um, but nowhere near as bad as some of the others. Um, I don't know. I'm good with it. I like it. Anyway, links in the description. Uh, if you want to see me install this kit about three other times, I'm sure I have videos for that too. Um, as well as a whole slew of other backlight mods, because that's kind of it's kind of my thing here. Um, I, don't, I don't have anything else to add. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, links in the description. Especially check out my spreadsheet if you're interested in the power usage numbers and specifics. I'll go ahead and get this one added sometime. Um, probably before this video goes up. Probably. <laughs> um, but otherwise, I'll catch you all next time and uh, keep on being awesome.